It may come as a surprise to discover that the Imperial Japanese Army and Navy Air Forces operated Third Reich-era German planes during World War II, and not just one or two, but dozens. From the mid-1930s, Germany and Japan maintained increasingly friendly relations that would eventually culminate in Japan joining the Axis with Germany and Italy on the 27th of September 1940. Germany's initial Far East trading ally was nationalist China from the 1920s to the late 30s, China being an excellent importer for post-World War I German firearms and aircraft. But unlike China, Japan was a rich nation with a well-developed aerospace industry of its own, and cooperation between the two grasping nations was inevitable. Japan would become a major market for German aircraft, including license building, and Germany a major importer of Japanese-produced raw materials and medicines for its growing war machine. Before the invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941, Germany and Japan were able to trade overland using the Trans-Siberian Railway in the Soviet Union, as well as by ship, but once this route was cut, sea journeys were the only practicable methods. The Allies attempted a naval blockade of Germany, and at the Indian Ocean and Atlantic ends of the journey, German blockade runners were vulnerable to attack by Allied warships, submarines and aircraft. Once Japan entered the war in December 1941, a combination of blockade-running surface ships and large cargo-carrying German U-boats and Italian and Japanese submarines managed to keep the trade flowing between Germany and Japan, which was incidentally the subject of my very first book, Yanagi, written back in 2005. Japan was very interested in German fighter planes. One of the first German types sent by ship to Japan were three Heinkel HE-100 DO fighters, a type that was not adopted by the Luftwaffe, even though one of the fastest fighters of its generation. It lost out to the Messerschmitt ME-109. It first flew in 1938, and only 25 were built. The Japanese purchased three Heinkel 100s for 1.2 million Reichsmarks and a set of jigs for a further 1.6 million with a view to license building the aircraft. The three DOs arrived in Japan in May 1940 and were extensively tested by the Imperial Japanese Navy, Germany also delivering a Heinkel test pilot, Gerhard Nitschke, as part of the deal. The Japanese love the Heinkel 100 and scheduled production, building a factory at Chiba, but the war in Europe held up the delivery of plans and jigs and production never commenced. Another Heinkel interceptor that did serve with the Imperial Japanese Navy was the Heinkel HE-112BO, 12 aircraft being purchased by Japan and known in Japanese as the A7 HE-1. The HE-112 was another design that lost out to the Messerschmitt 109, and 103 were built, with some serving in the Luftwaffe, as well as the Royal Hungarian and Royal Romanian Air Forces. The Japanese used the 12 HE-112s during the war in China, but it was phased out of Japanese service before 1941. In 1941, Japan purchased five Messerschmitt 109E7s from Germany for Imperial Japanese Army evaluation. An outstanding fighter, it became the standard Luftwaffe interceptor, with almost 34,000 being built. The Japanese evaluated the E7s in mock dogfights against captured Allied aircraft like the Curtis P-40E, and against their own prototype fighters, the Kawasaki Ki-61 and the Nakajima Ki-43 and Ki-44. One Messerschmitt 109 was completely disassembled and closely studied by the Japanese, but in the end, the Japanese army rejected adoption of a license-built version of the 109, believing that the Mitsubishi Zero was a better aircraft overall, one of the Japanese prerequisites being long range, which the 109 sadly lacked. The Japanese found gainful employment for the 109's little brother, the Messerschmitt ME-108 Typhoon, purchasing 21 examples, 15 of which ended up being used by Manchukuo Airways, a Japanese-controlled civilian entity in the puppet state of Manchukuo, as the Japanese renamed the North Chinese province of Manchuria after its conquest in 1931-32. 
Dating from 1934, the Messerschmitt 108 was used by the Luftwaffe as a personnel transport and liaison aircraft during World War II, and the Imperial Japanese Army used the type in the same roles. Japan imported a single Fokker Wolf FW-190A5 for evaluation by the Japanese Army. This aircraft became the backbone of the Luftwaffe fighter force alongside the older Messerschmitt 109, and outclassed many Allied fighter types. The aircraft was shipped to Japan in pieces aboard a U-boat, and tested against the Ki-84 and other single-seat Japanese fighters, and it was found to have better acceleration, climbing performance, armament and so on, and the Japanese rated it better overall than the Messerschmitt 109 and the P-51C Mustang. Interestingly, once tests were completed, Japanese records indicate that the single 190 was given to a reconnaissance unit, indicating that it saw active service in the Far East. However, details are sketchy. The other aircraft that arrived with the FW-190 via U-boat was a single Messerschmitt ME-210A2, a heavy twin-engine fighter and ground attack aircraft. It had a chequered service history in the Luftwaffe, with only 90 being built, and was replaced quite quickly by the better Messerschmitt ME-410 Horniser or Hornet. The ME-210 was extensively tested in Japan at the 1st Tachikawa Air Army Arsenal, though the type was of course not adopted by the Japanese. The famous Junkers Ju-87 Stuka dive bomber was shipped to Japan early on. The Imperial Army evaluating one Ju-87A1 or B version. It was put on public display in Tokyo in 1940, the Japanese deciding not to adopt the type for their aircraft carriers. Production was considered but fell through, and the Stuka ended up in a museum in Tokyo where it was later destroyed in a US air raid. Some German aircraft designs inspired later Japanese production aircraft. For example, the Heinkel HE-118, a prototype monoplane dive bomber, 15 being built, was a competitor to the Stuka, but lost out in the government contract competition. In 1938, the Japanese imported two HE-118s for evaluation, and its design would influence the Yokosuka D-4Y Suisei naval dive bomber, used extensively in World War II. Similarly, a single Heinkel HE-70 fast passenger monoplane, bomber and reconnaissance aircraft was evaluated by the Japanese, its design inspiring the Aichi D-3A Vowel dive bomber of World War II fame. The most successful aircraft design sent to Japan was the Buka Bu-131 Jungmann, a biplane trainer. The Japanese license built the Jungmann for the Japanese Army, with the Hatsukaze engine 1037 being constructed, and for the Imperial Navy, with Kyushu K9W engines, a further 339 being built. In Japanese service, the Bu-131 was called the Nakajima E8N. Similarly, the excellent Fieseler Fi-156 Storch liaison aircraft was redesigned and built by the Japanese as the Kobe Seiko Tego. Obviously, the Japanese were very interested in German rocket and jet technology, but getting examples to them was increasingly difficult for the tenuous long-distance submarine service between German-occupied France and following the liberation of France, U-boat bases in Norway and the Far East. Although a V-1 flying bomb was not sent, its Argus pulse jet engine was in 1943. It contributed to the Japanese Kawanishi Baika jet. Similarly, parts of a Messerschmitt ME-163 Comet rocket interceptor were sent by U-boat to the Japanese. It was reverse engineered into the Mitsubishi J-8M1, which was superficially similar to the German aircraft. Plans were also sent to Japan for the Messerschmitt ME-262 twin-engine jet fighter. The Japanese developed a very similar aircraft from them that only reached the prototype stage before war's end. All these German aircraft ended up being either destroyed by American bombing, scrapped by the Japanese themselves, or captured by the US occupation authorities and scrapped post-war. 
Now the question you are undoubtedly going to ask is whether the Japanese sent the Germans any of their aircraft for testing. The answer is not really. The only Japanese aircraft confirmed to be used by the Germans were three Nakajima flying boats purchased in Japan by the German Navy and fitted to a German surface raider and used for anti-submarine patrols from the German U-boat base at Penang in Malaysia. Flown by Luftwaffe aircrew, the planes still in Japanese Hinomaru markings. No Mitsubishi Zeros ended up in Germany undergoing testing. Photographs like this one of Japanese Zeros wearing German-style crosses are authentic, however the explanation is that these are Japanese aircraft surrendering to the Allies in 1945. The Allied authorities ordered the Japanese to paint large black crosses on their aircraft's fuselages and wings. However, some sources do claim that a single example of a Mitsubishi Ki-46 Diner high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft may have been sent to Europe for testing, but this has not been confirmed. I hope you found that very interesting. If you have, please do help support the channel at PayPal and Patreon, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. 